Nick, what's going on? Well, it's a case of a power struggle continuing even after the resolution of that power struggle. So the accounts of what happened today are completely at log loggerheads. So I've been told by authoritative sources, and indeed versions of this account are on the front pages tomorrow, that relations today between the Prime Minister and his departing aides, that's Dominic Cummings and Lee Kane, that those relationships, as I was told, completely went off a cliff edge. So what I was told was that at around about two o'clock, the Prime Minister's team learnt that from within Downing Street, the Dominic Cummings team were briefing against the Prime Minister, describing him as indecisive, which I was told is code for he didn't agree with Dominic Cummings. I was also told that they had heard that that team had briefed against the Prime Minister's partner, Carrie Simons, um, for uh, speaking out against the appointment of Lee Kane as Chief of Staff. That was obviously the issue that created this row all this week. The Prime Minister later on called a meeting and said, I was told words to the effect of, I know what you're up to, it is time to leave. And then we saw obviously that abrupt departure. That account is strongly disputed by the team who've left Downing Street, described to me as a total lie. Yes, there was a 45 minute between the Prime Minister and Dominic Cummings and Lee Kane. It was described to me as very friendly and very warm. The Prime Minister reportedly said to them, I want to get the band back before the next general election. Lee Kane presented the Prime Minister with those famous gloves from the general election, which said, get Brexit done. He get Brexit done. He signed them for Lee Kane. Um, after Dominic Cummings left, uh, there was a, a meeting in the press office. The Prime Minister came down gave a speech about Lee Kane, and then Lee Kane was banged out. That's what happens in the world of newspapers. You get banged out of an office. And uh, the Prime Minister reportedly characterised what had happened as, we have good relations, but the relationship is over, and therefore you cannot live uh, under the same roof. You can't live together, described as there being no ill will. So today, I've been looking at how Dominic Cummings reached the end of the road for now. A forlorn retreat, though with a characteristic flourish. An exit through a door fit for presidents and prime ministers as Dominic Cummings made one last play for the limelight. The British people have spoken and the answer is, we're out. A partnership which changed Britain forever with the Brexit vote came to an abrupt end at tea time out of number 10 after Boris Johnson finally tired of his abrasive lieutenant. A bitter number 10 power struggle ended in emphatic failure for the remnants of the Vote Leave campaign in Downing Street who had fought hard to preserve their influence. Past glories in masterminding the Leave campaign counted for nothing as past personal missteps added to recent political failings with a series of U-turns persuaded the Prime Minister of the need for a fresh start. All a far cry from the days of Dominic Cummings' unassailable position a year ago. He ended the Tory Brexit civil war by leading the purge of the One Nation wing, dared to prorogue Parliament. The court is bound to conclude, therefore and then the pressed for the gamble of an election which delivered Boris Johnson a majority and Brexit. A victim of the Tory One Nation purge hopes the departure will mark a change. Uh, Dominic Cummings was a very, very successful campaigner, but his style was abrasive and combative and involved attacking institutions uh, in a way that was very unconservative. And in terms of effectiveness in, of, of the government, I don't think his record is particularly strong. So this is an opportunity now for, for Boris Johnson to change things, to adopt a different tone, a different approach. I hope he takes that opportunity. A leading Brexit party figure mourns the departure of Dominic Cummings. Dominic Cummings certainly seemed to me to have an insight into why people voted to leave the European Union. In that sense, he understood something about popular sovereignty. And it's obviously the case that when, for example, the Red Wall fell, that was an indication of a really genuine desire to see their democratic will seen through. And I just am worried that if Dominic Cummings, who I personally have little interest in, is being kicked out, 
whether what he symbolizes as the person who said take back control is being kicked out. That's the bit I'm not sure about. The self-proclaimed outsider takes leave of life on the inside. Down for now, but unlikely to depart the wider stage. Nick, what there? So it's been an extraordinary week. Will the Downing Street P45s change the path of Brexit? Or is this about a fundamental change in the diplomatic weather coming from Joe Biden's America? Policy editor Lewis Goodall reports. You all laughed at me. Well, I have to say, you're not laughing now, are you? Thank you very much. From this day forward, it's going to be only America first. America first. It's been an age of disruption, of old certainties fading, as if politics were smelted down and being cast anew. But if ever there were a counter-revolution, it is surely this emerging before our eyes. The glimmers of the old order re-emerging, with that order maybe claiming the scalp of our own Downing Street Jacobin. The, the architect of so much of the revolution of recent years, Dominic Cummings. His party says it's time to move on. Dominic Cummings isn't a member of the Conservative Party. He was instrumental in delivering the Leave vote at the referendum and he's joined the government and he's been instrumental in delivering a full Brexit, which will be achieved by the time of his departure. It's a natural time for him to, to move on. Monsieur Barnier, will we get a deal this week? But Brexit isn't done yet, and it is here that Cummings' absence attracts most feverish attention. Just me on with my job. Sources in the EU read this as a Prime Minister heading for a crunch week who is about to back down. It's possible, but others are more cautious. They're negotiating with the British government, and British negotiators are negotiating on a mandate that was given to them, handed to them by the Prime Minister. What his advisers think at the end of the day is irrelevant. Could it lead to the Prime Minister changing his mind on some of the Brexit positions that they have so far? Possibly. But again, it would be the Prime Minister who owns those changes, not uh, Dominic Cummings. It may be the end of an era, but in some ways it isn't the departure of Cummings himself that matters most, but that of Donald Trump's. This week, a former Democratic White House official lambasted Johnson's congratulations to Joe Biden, calling him a shapeshifter. It was meant as an insult, but in many ways, that is precisely what Boris Johnson is. He has shifted his political form again and again from Liberal Mayor of London. Like it or not, the free market economy is the only show in town. To a born-again populist. Kipper! <laughs> it's possible that it's happening once more. He will shift, uh, um, just as if you were you sailing a boat. You shift according to the wind. So, of course, he will... He will go on shifting, but he, really he has instinct and he, he likes to fight a war of movement and he doesn't like to be tied to a great many fixed positions. Johnson is already preparing for this new Biden-led world. I'm told that we should expect a significant speech on climate change from the Prime Minister in the coming weeks. But as for the rest of policy, Cummings or not, there is a huge question mark. The question on everyone's lips is what difference to policy a Johnson government absent Cummings will make. And the answer is, well, it'll be quite difficult to tell because on a whole array of domestic issues, it's not as if Dominic Cummings or Johnson have developed comprehensive new sets of proposals. Now, part of that, of course, is the pandemic, but part of it is also the story of a premiership which still lacks definition, which beyond the fact of Brexit and the talk of levelling up still hasn't articulated how it will begin to achieve many of its aims. But what there probably will be without Cummings is a change in tone, an end to the politics of the permanent war footing. This may be an interregnum for the politics of disruption rather than an ending, but 2021, for all sorts of reasons, is looking to be more polite all round.